Hi everybody, thanks for joining us today. Um, my name is Kathy Piantagini and I'm the Assistant Director for the Somerville Public Library. And I wanted to thank Erica Jones for inviting me and a few of my colleagues today to talk about some recommended reading for the summer. Um, and we're going to cover all the angles today. So um, let me introduce both of you. Um, the, Lily Sundell Thomas, who is uh, one of our reference librarians at the main library. Lily's been working with us for about six months almost. I think, maybe. Yeah, um, and it's been great to have you on board. And Allison Mitchell, who is our newest children's librarian at the West Branch, who also just graduated from the library science program at Simmons. And um, congratulations Thank again. <laughs> and so um, Allison will be talking about some books for kids and teens. So. Why don't we jump right in with you, Lily? What did you bring today? Sure. Well, I brought three, <coughs> but I thought I'd talk about some other ones. Um, this one I picked up today from the library, uh, The Stranger in the Woods, The Extraordinary Story of the Last True Hermit by Michael Finkel. Mm -hmm. um, and I admit that I haven't finished it, but um, I did start it this morning. It's sort of narrative, nonfiction. It really drew me in sort of immediately. Um, so the writing is definitely good, but it's about this guy that sort of leaves society kind of into the wild style um, And he just lives by this lake in uh, Maine for 27 years, I think um, and it's told I'm told it's told from the perspective of the officer that actually um, Caught him stealing something from a summer camp mm. Really interesting. Mm. Do yeah. you know like how long ago he was caught? by the officer? Ooh, is it all like fairly recently? I, I was just curious. Fairly yeah. Recent. Um, yeah, I think it must be because I was reading through it and it said something about, it referenced 2001, so it was definitely okay. pretty recent, mm. um, but interesting. Yeah, I'm going to put a hold on that actually. Do it. Nice. It didn't take yeah. too long to get it, maybe a week or so. Cool. Um, so I, then I also um, this brought this book. Oh, the that's Edgar super. It's a great one. Trending, I think, right? <laughs> I know that you read it. I you did, yes. Desk and told me that you really liked it. And you read it yeah, too? Yeah, I did, yeah. D and you liked it too? Oh, I thought it was I super. I loved it. Yeah, yeah. 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 It, wasn't, it, it wasn't at all what I expected. You know, there, there's a lot of yeah. plot twists, a lot mm -hmm. going on. Totally, totally. And um, this one is actually a National Book Award winner. And apparently, I'm just noticing now, Oprah's Book Club 2002 mm. selection. So, yeah, it's a good one. Um, then I brought sort of my own guilty pleasure sort of book, um, All the Birds in the Sky, which is a good, actually, YA crossover book. Very nice. Yes. Um, it is sort of sci-fi fantasy uh, book that takes place in, like, now, really now. Um, they reference a lot of kind of current uh, technology trends and stuff like that. Um, but it's about a boy and a girl, and the girl's a magician, and the, the boy is a science geek, and they sort of grow up together um, and there's this kind of epic battle between uh, science and magic. Hmm. Ooh. Interesting. And, oh, and it takes place now. Oh, Yeah, okay. in San Francisco, which is kind of fun too. Okay. Um, if you've been to San Francisco, you'll notice a lot of the landmarks in it. Hmm. Um, so, I'm a fantasy geek. I don't Dig. Know I nice. Yes. Dig it. Did you read, you read um, Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell by any chance? I did and it's it's not it's more in the vein of like The Magicians. Did you read that by Love? I Carson? didn't. No. Did you read that? I didn't. See there I am with the okay. fantasy geeking. Well, <laughs> no, <'cause> I have <laughs> a friend who loved Jonathan Strange oh, okay. and I know I the like stories that. are probably so different yeah. but I was wondering if he might like that. He might or the other one I thought this was kind of like was um, Mr. Penundrum's 24-hour book Oh store. I, yeah. Mm -hmm. that, one either? that one also I think takes place in San Francisco and it's kind of like modern sci-fi fantasy -y. That's um, not the one that started as a graphic novel, oh, is I don't it? No. Oh, I think that's actually sorry. It's um that's one about a bookmobile. Oh, okay. It's fantasy. Um, cool. But anyway, yeah, I'll tell you about that yeah. offline. Yeah. <laughs> I can't fantasy remember the bill or the author. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I didn't bring it, but Lincoln and the Bardo is totally trending. I know we we're talking that, about yeah, it Yeah, that is going in and out of West constantly. Constantly. And yeah. I mean, at Central, too, I think we've got lots of people putting holes in it. Um, I listened to the audiobook, which mm -hmm. was really, really cool. Um, so Lincoln and the Bardo is about uh, Lincoln's son dying, and then he goes, and apparently in real life he went and um, would sort of cry by his son's grave. Mm -hmm. 
uh, people noticed and it was weird and he would go and hold him apparently. So um, Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Sorry. Lincoln. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So is this like historical fiction or? It's way kookier than that. Okay. Though. So I actually I was reading a New York Times review of it earlier and they said it's like a a weird folk art diorama of a cemetery come to life. Um, wow. It is the straight one of maybe one of the strangest books that I've ever read. So mm -hmm. it, all of these um, ghosts, these ghost characters, sort of like come come to life, and they're sort of helping the son as he sort of grieves his father, and then his father is there. Um, but the, it's like really fantasy mm -hmm. kind of. Yeah. Um, and the audiobook was really cool. It had like 160 narrators. Yeah. Wow. What? And could you tell yeah. who was talking? Yes. Was it hard to follow? No, it wasn't hard to follow. They had really different voices. David Sedaris was one of the voices, mm -hmm. and you know he has a really distinct voice. Yeah. Lena Dunham, and I think Ben Stiller as well, like really well-known people. Mm. Um, so I would suggest that too, if for no other reason that it's really trending right now. Mm. <laughs> um, Reminds me a little bit of um, the Graveyard book. Where, oh, yeah, did Damon. you read that? I love that. I love Neil I Damon. mean, only in this idea that it, the setting is a cemetery yeah. and um, the souls that are there, if I'm remembering correctly, kind of take care of this mm -hmm. boy who was left there. Yeah. Is that, I hope mm -hmm. I'm remembering that right. I read it a while ago, but. Mm. Um, yeah, similar, but definitely more adult. Yeah. Uh, but I love that book. It's yeah, so that sounds good, too. Wow, those are great books. Mm -hmm. Dig, dig. Yeah. Cool. And what about you? What did you bring, Allison? Well, let's let's see. Let's go. <laughs> <straight>. <laughs> yeah. let's, let's go to the other end. With some picture books. Okay. So, so I brought three picture books. Um, I don't know. Well, I, I may know the Elephant and Piggy books mm -hmm. by Mo Willems. Mo Willems so, was a regular at my old library. Oh, he's that's so fantastic. cool. I was so starstruck when he came in. So <laughs> very sad. He's not writing any Elephant and Piggy books anymore. But um, this just came in, and I read it, and it reminded me kind of of Elephant and. Oh my gosh! I want you to read it clown. right now, oh. like a story time. So it really reminded me of Elephant and Piggy because. Um, this one, I'm not sure if this is shorty or clem. Anyway, a package arrives, but it's for the other one, and he has to wait all day to open it. And it so is hard. so hard to wait. <laughs> so hard to wait. Um, but I thought it, you know, it captured kind of that feeling really well. Can so. you, oh, thank goodness. Okay, because I needed to see oh, some that's art. Fun. Yeah. Are they like paper cut? Um, it sort of looks oh, like that. Oh, yeah, it kind of looks like that, doesn't it? Maybe it's just in that style. Um, but, you know, it's so hard to wait. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, so Love this, if you're having a little bit of elephant and piggy withdrawal, this is like short that. and clem are good. I don't recognize the author no. either. Is it oh, first um, picture book or? Oh, yeah, because he used to be a children's no, library. I know. I miss it, actually. Oh. All the consignment that comes up. Yes. Yeah. He also produces puzzles. Oh, cool. Cool. Interesting. Did you get one in the staff room? Yeah. And this we just got in at the end of last week, um, Morris Mole, and it is fantastic. It's so kind of like um, Sam and Dave Dig a Hole by Mac Barnett, which is this great story about these two kids who are digging a hole and they keep going left and right and down and they keep missing this giant gemstones. Uh, <laughs> 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 so, so it's kind of like that. Morris Mole um, is uh, one of a big family of moles. And no one, he likes to do things a little differently, and mm. oh. you know nobody really pays attention to him. And they run out of food, so all his mole brothers and sisters dig down to get more food. But food, but Morris Mole digs up, oh. and he finds the great outside. Of and the rest of the story is kind of about the adventures he has outside, which are pretty oh. exciting. But it's a really sweet book. Very fun. Kind of like a Ratatouille story. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no. That's awesome. <laughs> And then those, those are kind of silly. Um, then I also brought, sometimes you just need like something that's really pretty, yeah. right? That's Especially really if you're a parent and you're reading a lot of stories and maybe it's bedtime. Yep. I would go with the blue hour um, and then I would stop right here at the very beginning uh, and just look at the colors. And my, yeah. ki my kids are eight and 11, so they're a little older, but they spent a really long time just on this page, hmm. looking at all the different colors of blue and hmm. the memes, and, and that was great. And the rest of the book is nice, too. So <laughs> it's all about kind of the end of the day, gorgeous illustrations um, about all these different animals and what oh, they do at the beautiful. end of the day. And then at the in the back, it has a um, map of library the world. Library sticker. Yes. <laughs> and the library sticker. <laughs> <laughs> and where all the animals are from. So that's kind of cool. That's too. fantastic. Yeah. It's very calm, mm -hmm. beautiful, beautiful. So those are some picture books that I brought. Um, I also brought kind of an early chapter book if you're 
beyond a beginning reader, but just you know, kind of want a chapter book but aren't ready for a whole chapter book, um, Sofia Martinez. This is a whole series. And she's a girl. She lives in the city with her family. Um, her grandmother lives nearby. Um, you could imagine, perhaps, that they live in Somerville. Mm. Um, and um, this book is kind of fun. It has a couple chapters, so it, so that makes kids feel really good because they're chapters. I already um, love her. Look at her. I know, isn't she? <laughs> yeah. yeah. She's very, um, like ready to party. <laughs> but it also has um, Spanish words throughout, and oh. they're in this kind of pink color, um, which is nice. Um, for the story, and so this mm. is just a little story about each each book just has a story about what they're doing. It's it's you know they're not they're just doing regular things that regular people do, um, and I think kids can really identify with that. And then in the back, if you really want to get into it, there's a couple discussion oh, questions and activities oh, that and a grown up can do with the kids. A little glossary of the Spanish words in like case that. those are new to you. Um, so there's a whole series of these. The format right. kind of reminds me a little bit of the Kate DiCamillo, um, yeah, Molly Mercy and, Watson oh, that too, actually, oh. but Molly and Bing. Yes. Even yes. though they're not as tall, but yes. this, the number of words on a page and the illustrations kind of remind me. I like, I wonder that will be a series if it isn't yeah. already, I imagine. Mm -hmm. Great. So got that. Um, then a little nonfiction. I'm kind of obsessed with these books. Um, the Who Was books. Oh, great. Um, we did, I think, I think um, both West and Central did book clubs on these for kids. So, mm -hmm. so they're great um, biographies. They have historical and current figures and a really, really broad range of people um, that they've written biographies about. So um, they, you know, they have an interesting, fun, so cartoonish great. picture on the front. Yeah. And then like a good size type some pictures, some little sidebars. So I think they're accessible for a, a pretty wide range mm -hmm. of kids, yeah. um, reading levels. And they make the people sound really interesting. They're very, they're written in a really contemporary style. So if you want to get a little nonfiction in for the kids in your life, I would suggest one of these over the summer because yeah. they won't really realize that you're giving them history. They'll That's perfect. Think that that it's perfect. a fun book. So I brought some of those. Yeah. I can keep going. Ah, <laughs> yes, <laughs> please. Here. So then I brought um, two middle grade um, fiction books for kind of like the fourth through sixth grade, maybe. It's a good age. Um, yes, yes. This is The Lotteries Plus One. Um, and it's by Emma Donahue, who wrote oh, Room. Room. Oh, I've heard oh, about oh, that. Yeah. Yeah. Did you see the movie? Yeah. The Room was yeah, that's amazing. Adult okay. yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, Did you read Room? I didn't. Oh, OK. Yeah. Yeah. It was fantastic. But I've heard so many good yeah. things. It was yep. really fantastic. And this is the same author, but definitely a kid's book. Um, did you yeah, read that I yet? I did read this, yeah. It's, is that it's ours? This I is hope. ours. It oh, is ours. all right. I think Would I like want it. it. Yes. Because okay. <laughs> I actually read a review, a uh, very favorable review of it, and I have it on my reading yeah, no, to-do list. You'll so. enjoy it. Okay, cool. It's about this um, intentional family, two moms who are a couple and two dads who are a couple, and between that, they all live together and they have seven kids. Um, and they're just like this bohemian homeschooling hippie family cool. and everything's good and they have their whole routine and then one of the grandfathers comes to live with them uh. and that just mixes every he's the plus one and that just kind of mixes everything up and the narrator of the story is um, maybe nine or ten and she's kind of really level-headed in this sort of wacky family mm. um, but she's the one who reacts um, the worst to the grandfather coming oh um, so it's her perspective on that whole situation. Perfect. This is a great book. Cool. Perfect. Yeah, that, that sounds, sounds so great. Really interesting. To right now. Yes. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and then this one. <coughs> I mean, technically this is a children's book, but I would recommend this to anybody. Um, it's Beyond the Bright Sea by Lauren Wolk, and she um, won a Newbery Honor for Wolf Hollow. Oh yes, um, that book was beautiful. Wasn't that? So beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so this. Um, Actually, it's kind of fun. It takes place on the Elizabeth Islands off of New Bedford, maybe oh. 100 years ago. And the main character, who's a girl named Crow, um, when she was a newborn, an actual newborn baby, she washed up on this deserted island in a boat. And the man who was living there was kind of a recluse, and he obviously took her out of the boat and <laughs> raised her. And they mm. tried to find someone who was responsible for her, but no one, no one responded. So he raised her. And when she's about 12, when the story takes place, and she's questioning kind of her, both her history and her identity, because she doesn't look like anyone else mm. that she sees, you know, the few people that she sees. And so she's like, what happened to me and who am I at the same time? Oh. So while she's having these questions, there's this mystery unfolding on a nearby island. So it's kind of the intersection of the 
coming of age story and the mystery story. This is a great one. Sounds really good. I want to read yeah. that one. Yeah, all of these are like perfect suggestions so for the summer. I love yes. it. Um, the last book I brought is um, a YA book, but again, I'd recommend this for any adult. Um, it's very contemporary. It's called The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. It's her first book. I cannot wait to see what she writes next because mm. I, I can't even imagine. Um, it's um, about um, police violence. So the main character. Um, lives in the inner city and goes to a prep school in a nearby suburb. And okay. she has always been conscious of these two lives that she has um, when she's at home and when she's at school. And then, I'm not giving anything away because this happens in the very beginning, she's out with some of her friends from home and one of her friends is shot um, by a police officer. Um, he was unarmed at the time and he dies. Um, and she was the only witness. Mm. She was with him in the car. Whoa. And Ugh. so she has to, throughout the book, decide how how public she's going to be as the only witness. Um, and so it's, I mean, it's a really, really intense book, but it's so timely and I think such an important read and so well written, mm -hmm. just amazingly, amazingly mm. well written. Um, and I think looking at the acknowledgments that it's already been optioned for a movie. Ooh, um, I believe that YA books are so, so <laughs> yeah. popular. And they're so, they're so great too. Yeah. So awesome. pretty good. When did that, is that in, did this year, last year? This year, uh -huh. I think this spring. Yeah, 2017. Mm, Looks well. like it's already seen some. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> some circulation. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Great. So, so that's what I brought. I love it. Those are all awesome books. Um, okay, so the three that I brought are really vacation reads, like literally vacation reads for me. And I'll probably start with the Before the Fall by Noah Hawley. This is a book that I took with me last uh, year when we went to Martha's Vineyard for a vacation, which mm -hmm. Michael, my husband and I, we really like going there with friends and we rent a house. And I read the review and the setting, it, the book starts in Martha's Vineyard actually. Oh, wow. Yeah, so instantly I was like, okay. And actually I think it came out just as we were getting ready to go on vacation. So it was like all signs are pointing to <laughs> get this book. Get it. And, um, so anyway, but this, oh, and the other um, thing to know about the author is he's the um, executive writer, director, producer for Fargo, the TV series, which. I love that TV series. Right? His name was familiar. Yeah. Has and he okay. written other things? Or I, I mean, other than You know, I don't know. Um, but the, I've been, it looks like, yeah, he has four other books. So, yeah. And, um. Fargo is just so smart and fun and it has like so many good elements to it and so creative and artistic and I feel like actually a lot of that is in this story. It's a complete page turner. Um, basically what happens in the very beginning is there's a plane crash. So the plane is leaving Martha's Vineyard and heading to New York and then something goes completely amiss and um, there are two survivors. And so the story is basically the aftermath of this accident and also it focuses on all the people who are in the plane. So basically like it's a chapter or a section of each person and a little bit of their backstory and how they're all kind of like really, some, there's some overlap and there's a little bit of a mystery involved too because they don't know what happened and very timely. There's a lot of, um, there's a character in it that reminds me a lot of like Bill O'Reilly and this whole Fox News. Um, and there, there's a lot of sensationalism that gets tied in because of like who, why did this crash happen? Because there was an executive on the plane that I think actually owned the news channel. Blah, 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 blah. Wow. At any rate, it was fantastic. So Loaded. yeah, I'm gonna highly recommend. Um, and then the next two that I want to talk about are the two books that I brought with me just recently because I went on vacation um, last week to Agunk Whitman and so I wanted to make sure I had books. So I actually brought I think three with me but these were the two that um, that stuck. So one was literally The Beach Read <laughs> and that was The Vacationers by Emma Straub. Um, 
I cannot so wait to yeah. talk about this book. So she wrote Modern Lovers. Okay. Yes. That's awesome. um, and yeah. then she actually has some other books before both of those. Okay. Modern Lovers is the one where they were in the band in college? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, and it's in New York. Um, yeah. yeah. With families and yeah. stuff like that. Um, you know what? I'll talk about this one first. So <laughs> I brought that one. This one. <laughs> and so this is a great story. These are the stories I love to read, too, for um, summer reads where... It's a whole family that goes on vacation on an island in the Mediterranean off the coast of Spain. That's and nice. there's like that perfect okay. amount of family dysfunction, poignancy, um, like it, all of the stories are really like engrossing because you're kind of seeing it from the perspective of all the, the people who are staying in the house. Yeah. So this um, family is the mom and dad and then they have two children, one who is just about to be 30 and is in a relationship with a woman who is in her early 40s, and they are both coming in on this vacation. And then the daughter, who is just graduating high school and about to go to college, and then the mom in the family, her best friend, um, who is a gay man who's married to this other man, and they're about to adopt a child. So, uh, and all of this is happening while they're at, like in Spain, and so it's about, you know, it's like all the elements of a great summary. There's like an infidelity somebody's dealing with, you know, the teenage daughter has a crush on the person who's teaching her Spanish, like while she's on vacation. It's a beautiful setting as far as descriptions of the countryside and the coast, and um, so it's easy to visualize it, and it was yeah. just very satisfying. So this is the one that like I took with me to the beach, and then the other one I brought was, let me take the sticker off, the new Dennis Lehane. I read that. Oh, you did? Yes. Okay. So, so this, this was my dilemma. Was so so this was the one I was reading at the house that we were staying at. And so eventually what happened was they were neck and neck and then something happened and I kept reading this. Oh. But I'm about... So you not finish that one yet? No. I'm okay. only 100 pages <laughs> in and so it. much has yeah. happened already. Yeah. Like I can't even imagine what else is going to happen. And, because um, of the way it starts, you... St <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh. All right. Same thing. But um, something so happens at the beginning, and you think that, that that gives you a hint what's going to happen, but but no, maybe it doesn't. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. that's, that's fantastic to know. Wow, you are like avid reader. Yeah, How do you so have time much to read? All? I don't sleep very much. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, I did pick this back up, so now I'm like reading it with you know, a fr reading in a frenzy, and. Um, the other, I heard a radio interview with Dennis Lehane and he was talking, they were asking him, you know, what it was like, because he's writing the book from the perspective of a woman who's probably like in her mid thirties yeah. and what that experience was like. And um, yeah, this is a really compelling story. I don't even know, we haven't even talked about what it's about, but it's basically about, tell me if I'm wrong, the main character kind of going through a mental collapse um, with a high pressure job and a family backstory where she doesn't know who her father is and um, but there's so much more going on and I'm like almost a hundred pages in and, and it's all just beginning. Oh, man. What else there's to say about it? <laughs> say one more thing about it. I think when I was reading it the thing that I, I said to my family when I because of the way it starts you think you know how it's going to end but that is actually only addressed maybe halfway through the book. So you have the whole second half of the book. Hmm. And when you get to this big reveal, mm -hmm. <laughs> which I can't talk Yee! about, oh, no. you're like, what's going to happen in <laughs> the book? Oh, Fantastic. Gets, OK, yeah. thank you for saying oh. that, because I'm excited <laughs> now. And the other thing I'm looking at now, seeing it, all these like blue green covers, it's like, oh, yes, these Ooh, are some of the colors I would like to promote. So. <laughs> yes, so. so anyway, those are my three. Yeah, There's so many good know. books. Um, and I guess at this point, what I would remind all of you is you can get all of these books except for the one that I took and, and the, the one, one that, that you <laughs> took. <laughs> um, you can put yourself on hold for them, but they're all available at the Somerville Public Library. And um, another thing to talk about maybe is some of the programs that we've got coming up. Um, 
So right now, this year, it's the first year that we have summer reading programs going on for every age group. Um, so traditionally, we always have a summer reading program for the kids, um, that's babies through about 12 years old. But this year, we're also doing a summer reading program for teens and a totally separate summer reading program for adults. Um, and there's prizes to give away as reading incentives for all the age groups. And um, the one big one to note is the raffle for the adult reading program um, because you can enter to win tickets to see a Red Sox game, um, which is great. So for more information about all of that, and um, oh, also let me interject and talk about because there's a lot going on, um, <laughs> our Somerville Reads campaign. Yes. Um, we unfortunately don't have a copy of the actual book, but the committee um, chose this wonderful graphic novel for kids, but really it's a graphic novel for all ages called El Defo by C.C. Bell. Um, we've all read it, and I think we would all agree it's oh, amazing. It's so amazing. Yeah. Um, and so we're really excited about that. We have all the copies available for um, people in Somerville to check out at every library, at every branch. Um, and then if you, you know, what we're encouraging you to do is read the book this summer. Um, and then when you come back from all of your vacations and all of your fun things, we're going to have a lot of programming based around the book from mid-September to mid-October. So there's a lot in store for that, which um, I think we're all excited about. Um, so all of these things, you can find out more information by visiting the libraries. Um, you can check out our website, which is somervillepubliclibrary.org. We also do social media really well. <laughs> um, and that means you can find us on Facebook and Twitter and newly Instagram and the Instagram account is awesome and I love it so much so um, thanks again Erica and yeah have a good summer everyone